the money, the cars, the fancy watch, the hot superficial girlfriend, the vacations, your health insurance, all that, the big house, all of that shit is the booby prize. It's the second place prize that we're, most of the planet is chasing and dying after, okay? It's the second place prize. The grand prize that they don't want you to know about is love. It's a, it's a hum of love in your belly, okay? In your heart, in your soul, it's well-being, it's peace. That's the grand prize. Because when you have that, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters when you have that. This well-being, just a, it's a sort of humming feeling. It's a, you can't really talk about it. You can only feel it, right? And some people have never felt it, right? And some people live there. Heaven and hell are states of consciousness. We live in this lifetime. We have in this lifetime, okay? So that's the real life's work, is achieving love in your vessel, achieving a relationship with yourself where you love yourself, you love life, and you do that by getting rid of shit. You don't do it by adding shit on like we've been taught all our lives. You don't need to learn anything else, okay? Or do more self-help or do more any of that. It's just about getting rid of the junk. This is my, uh, my first time speaking in public, um, so I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm more so nervous because I know I'm going to break down in tears, which, by the way, I need tissues 100%. Uh, I'm not, that's not a joke. If someone, yeah, yeah. Cause, uh, <laughs> thank you. Because uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty raw journey uh, still for me. It was only seven months ago that I was actually uh, peeing in a bucket in my, in my bedroom because I couldn't leave my bedroom uh, out of fear and terror and uh, uh, panic. Here's my, uh, here's my story. I'm just going to get right into it, and it's going to be raw, and I'm just going gonna, gonna to go deep with it. And uh, if I start crying, whatever. But... Like I said, three years ago, I was doing all these things. I was living in the Lower East Side uh, of Manhattan. I had a beautiful girlfriend. I was traveling the world, competing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I was doing all things that, quote unquote, mean success. And there was a, an internal void, of course, we, this void that we all have. I definitely had that. Um, and uh, eventually, at some point, in a two-week period, I went from being that man to feeling like a lost little child, seemingly overnight. It felt like I started tripping on acid 24-7 without taking any drugs. That one or two voices that we have in our heads became four, five, six voices, incomprehensible voices. It was pure, utter torture. It was, it was, it was, you could put whatever label on it you want, but it was pure, utter torture to be in my existence, in my body, on, at a second-to-second -second basis. I became suicidal within a week. And I had no idea what was going on with me. I was terrified, and, um, and I, I, was, I, I thought I was dying. There was no other way. There was, it was, literally was just death. I would look at myself in the mirror, and I would just see death in my eyes. And um, that, of course, led into a miserable depression, it started, which started with the, the inability to hear my own thoughts, and it led to panic, which led to despair. And... In, a, in a, a couple months, I was just so depressed. I mean, every single day was a dark, gloomy, rainy day. Every thought was a gloomy thought. Everything, like Marcus talks about, everything was in that negative chatter zone, times 100. And I couldn't escape it. My first thing was I tried to escape it, right? That's the first mechanism for the human being is how do we escape this pain? So what I did is I, I tried to talk to as many girls as I can on the street. That was like the most potent drug for me. I'd literally just do what Sasha does and just literally just every single girl I saw, every beautiful girl I would talk to, and I would get that five-second high and maybe a high later from texting them, succeeding at, at it. And uh, I, try, you know, I was trying every drug under the sun, every freaking drug known to mankind just to calm this pain. And it was then in those days that I realized that we cannot blame an addict, even her like heroin addicts is a big issue in the United States, it's a big issue in the world. We cannot blame the addict, we have to blame the system. And Gabor Mate says, it's not why the heroin, it's why the pain. And this is very true because in those days, being the disciplined fighter that I was, there was nothing that I wanted more than to curl up and take heroin or any Xanax or any freaking drug that I could find. I never tried heroin, but any drug that I could find to mask the pain. And uh, we have to treat these people with compassion to make a shift in our society and our world. Otherwise, we're going to continue on this path. 
So after the drugs didn't work, the women didn't work, I went to psychiatrists, I went to my parents for help. I'm 23 years old at the time, you know, what, mom, dad, I, need, I have no money, I need serious help, I don't know what, what's going on, I'm tripping out, something's really bad is happening to me, I have depression, I have panic, whatever, I have anxiety disorder. And of course, the psychiatrist reaffirmed all of these conditioned beliefs of you have this, you have that, you have that, ADHD, you have depression, you have, you have to take these seven medications, and you'll have to be on it for the rest of your life. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I took these medications, these poisons. Uh, I took them for, for about four to six months, trying everything I could, Lexapro, Zan uh, Clonopin, Xanax, uh, Latuda, every, every fucking drug. And uh, they made me worse. I became like a numb zombie, really. I'd be just floating around in like a, like a suicidal state, totally numb to the world. And um, it's very sad, you know, a lot of the population is actually living in this limbo between life and death. But um, at one point, I came to a fork in the road. I said to myself, I said, when it wasn't working after four or five months, I said, I can continue down this path of, of, of psychiatry and, and pills, and it's for certain going to lead me to mediocrity, to pain, more pain, to living in probably an institution in one day, or I can take it upon myself with my gut and with my heart and know that all of these intelligent people around me have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. That this psychiatrist from Harvard and my dad who's an engineer and my mom who's intelligent and all my friends who are all brilliant, who are all telling me, you have to get help, you have to get help, you have to go stay on these pills. And I came in the fork in the road and I said, I go down this one path and I'm fucked. So why not at least choose this maybe of escaping this realm of hungry ghosts, escaping the dark night of the soul, as Marcus talked about. And, uh, and I jumped right into that fucking fire. I, I flew to the Amazon uh, to work with ayahuasca, which seems to be a common denominator in this, in this uh, stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, I did one ceremony and went into... <laughs> I did one ceremony and went into uh, utter fear and terror times a hundred, more than anything I've ever experienced in my life. And uh, it was like, uh, I don't even, I can't explain it. It was like taking one million hits of acid and never coming back, just disappearing and lost in the sauce. And that's pretty much where I was. And uh, I was supposed to do six ceremonies at that center and I did one and I flew home, almost took the plane down in a panic and despair in the back of the plane basically begging the flight attendants for, for Xanax, and uh, they, almost, they, they literally almost brought the plane down. And uh, I got, went to, got to JFK, they did a full cavity search, uh, deemed me not a drug dealer, because they thought I was like, in, 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 in Peru, they don't see this level of unprovoked panic, so they thought I was smuggling drugs in my rectum and that I freaked out or I got panicky or something, because they just don't, they don't experience this uh, in, 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 in Peru. Um, I mean, they do, but not on the same scale. So anyway, uh, go from the flight straight to the mental hospital. I was suicidal. I was just, just distraught, just totally distraught. In the mental hospital thinking this was rock bottom, right? This has to be rock bottom. I'm in the mental hospital. How could it get any worse than this? Surrounded by tortured souls, surrounded by med heavily medicated beings. And, um, and um, you know, I, I got out of the hospital. I cultivated some resemblance of stability. Actually, actually what I did is I, I did uh, ketamine injections in New York City. They're, they're legal in New York City for those who are like suicidal uh, and, and who are in severe pain and they basically just can take you out of a suicidal state. Uh, and they did uh, for about a day. <laughs> but just seeing that relief for a day gave me a new purpose, new hope. So I do the ketamine. I call my buddy to get us mushrooms because after I woke up in the mental hospital, I knew that this was a pain inside of me that I had to work through. That if I didn't work through this pain, it would consume me. And the only way out of this fire was actually into it and through it. The only way out of the pain is always through it. So I, I, I dove in again. I started doing mushroom ceremonies with my friend out in nature. I would cry to him. <clears throat> I would cry to him for, for six, eight hours at a time, releasing this multi-generational pain that I had carried. Um, and uh, found some relief. I started experiencing... Uh, an understanding of how important it was to have a healthy diet. So I, uh, 
I started making diet changes and, and whatnot, and I'll get into that in more detail later, but uh, I started doing enemas, cleaning the colon, and uh, meditation. I did several Vipassana retreats where I would go and actually spend 10 days in total silence uh, meditating for 10 hours a day. It was fucking crazy. Um, not pleasant at all. <laughs> um, and um, uh, so... Okay, so yeah, I mean, I read hundreds of books. Did started doing fasting, water fasting, um, which I can talk about more later. But uh, then I synchronistically met a beautiful woman, and she happened to be one of the lead communications directors of the largest ayahuasca center in the world, in Peru. And uh, she happened to go to my high school, but I never knew her in high school. There's always synchronicities, synchronicities in life, always. Um, and uh, we... We started dating. She took me to the jungle with her, and I spent six months in the jungle. I did 21 I more ayahuasca ceremonies. Everyone around me thought I was nuts for going back, but I knew that it was uh, this inner demon, this inner unrest that had to be worked through. Otherwise, I would die. It was, there was two ways to go. Fight every single day for my life or die. That was it. There's nowhere else to go, and it seems unreasonable to understand that. But if, and if you've never experienced panic or depression, you can't fathom it. You simply cannot fathom it, and you will just may dismiss what I'm saying as uh, reasonable. But panic and biochemical panic is not like anything you've ever experienced, like getting nervous before talking to you guys or, or getting nervous before talking to a woman. There are levels of panic and pain and despair that are so much greater than anything you could ever imagine and even me, I have seen other people suffer in mental hospitals more than I, that one visit in the hospital, more than I probably ha have ever suffered. But my point is, is that it's just not fathomable unless you've experienced it, and you don't want to. Um, but it's not a matter of willpower. It's not a matter of get a hold of your thoughts, dude, or get a job, dude. It's all that is total, utter bullshit when it really comes down to severe mental illness or shamanic initiation. Um, there's, a, you know, there's really a, a thin line between the two, actually. It's really one and the same, um, if you allow it to be. So I spent six months in the jungle. Every single moment of my day was focused on being present, okay, witnessing my thoughts. I would literally walk barefoot in the jungle to ground with the earth, and I would walk like this, <sighs> narrating every step to myself. Because anywhere except for the present moment was torture, any thought that I, that I projected, anything that went in my mind was torture. The only place I could be was here now. So I would just literally, 10, 12 hours a day, <sighs> I love you, Josh. I love you, Josh. I love you, Josh. The, all day. And I loved Marcus's talk because of that. Because uh, all day, that's what I did. You know, every single day, all day. I would look at myself in the mirror for an hour a day. I love you, dude. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. I'm so sorry, you know? And um, I left the jungle. As I was leaving the jungle, the shamans had all told me that I needed to do a dieta. A dieta is an apprenticeship. It's the next level of ayahuasca shamanism where you ingest a tree and you basically ingest the tree while fasting and this tree comes to life and teaches you, uh, gives you lessons. And I was going to diet the most powerful tree in ayahuasca shamanism. It's called white acaspi. And this is the tree that they use in indigenous, they use at a very young age for the shamans to devote themselves to nature, to devote themselves to the plants. And I don't know, you know, based on the talks that have been given, I know a lot of people are spiritually open here, but a lot of people will say, like, what, a tree giving you knowledge? It's crazy. We have such conditioned minds, and we have such a fucked up paradigm to think that there's no such thing as spirits and no such thing as uh, other realms. Um, because we can't even hear 99% of, of, of sound and more 99.9% .9 of light we can't even see, okay? These minds are our filters to live in this reality. The filter can be broken, right? Schizophrenia is an example of that filter breaking and the person is just, it's not like they're, 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 they're cuckoo, they're just experiencing the spirit realm at the same time and we don't know how to decipher it. But what you can do is touch the spirit world, come back. Touch it again deep, a little deeper, come back. That's how you push the filter and that you start to see that there's way more going on in this planet than what meets the eye and that what we've been taught. So, so this, this 
<clears throat> this dieta was going to be my apprenticeship. And the reason I was going to do this dieta is because there was nothing else in my mind that made sense except for the fact that I was a shaman. Because I had read a lot of history and cultural books, and they talk about the shaman going through a shamanic sickness before, uh, uh, and, and before succumbing to being a shaman, before accepting the call to being a shaman. And they will be tortured for years, sometimes bedridden, vomiting all the time, shitting all the time, until they succumb to the call. And this, of course, is the new shaman of the village and, and, and the indigenous uh, population. And uh, what they do is actually, when someone is experiencing these voices and these things, uh, these shamanic illness uh, symptoms, they'll actually sing and chant to the individual. The whole community will come together and support the individual for it to him to transmute this experience, for him to then help the rest of the community in the future. In our country, and I'm sure here too, give him pills, put him in a fucking ward, because they're useless. And, but the truth of the matter is that the people who you know who are the sickest are actually the ones with the largest medicines, and the ones who need to survive more than anyone else for massive shifts to happen in humanity. So, I leave the jungle feeling a little better, experiencing a deep connection with nature, experiencing these massive insights, big insights, totally rewiring my brain and my understanding of life and the universe. And, uh, but I wasn't well, you know, by no means. Every day was still a fight. And uh, this is 21 ayahuasca ceremonies later. Every day is a fight. <laughs> Those six months were pure torture, so much work. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at this point, I'm a, a broken man for not, by, by not being well and having worked as hard as I had. So I go, I go back home, I do my routine, which is just a ridiculous routine. I would drink a gallon of distilled water in the morning in order to take a crap because I was so fearful all the time, so anxious. My gut was always clenched. Everyone around me scared me. I was like a little tortured boy. And I couldn't take shit in the morning. I would have to like fucking stretch for two hours a day and listen to music and tell myself I loved myself for two hours before I could take a shit. And if I didn't shit, I was tortured because in hindsight, I understand how the de detox works. Uh, but at the time, I didn't know why I was tortured. So I'm doing, I mean, at this point, I'm putting all my energy that I put into jiu-jitsu into my health. And I was doing sun gazing, earthing, walking barefoot on nature, colonics, fasting for 10 days at a time, only drinking water, uh, doing juice fasts, doing enemas, coffee enemas, um, uh, meditation, yoga, uh, everything that you've heard on the internet of being a healing modality, like holistic modality. I tried 10 different diets, all failed me. Uh, and, but I still did them because the other option would have been death, right? This whole time, just remember, death or life every day. So here's where it starts getting real ugly, and maybe I'll break down, maybe I won't, I really don't know. But I remember I thought I was at rock bottom at that hospital. Prepare for these nine months at my house to go to do the dieta in isolation and in deeper into the Amazon jungle than I had ever been in a remote village. Once I was in the remote village, I would be in a 30-minute walk into a primary jungle, a never-been-cut forest, if you've ever experienced what a never been cut Amazon jungle is, it is, you are not on planet Earth. You are, it is a totally different planet, okay? I was sharing my tambo with, you know, I'd have monkeys literally just talking to me. Uh, I, now keep in mind, I'm by myself, totally no communication with other human beings, all right? So this is for three months. Uh, this is, in my head, what made sense to me. Don't get, you know, I... I I don't know why, but this is what made sense to me. I was a shaman, I had to learn how to be one, and that was the only way to escape this pain. So what I did is, uh, what, what I was doing was, I was, spending, uh, I, was, I was spending three months isolated in the jungle uh, with cockroaches sharing my tambo with me, monkeys, uh, just the loudest nature no noises you could ever imagine. And uh, I lasted one month. After a month of the most excruciating pain I've ever been, been, been in, uh, the, the drinking the tree was like taking 100 NyQuil's, really. It just put me on my ass. I couldn't move. I was just so fucked after drinking that tree. I was drinking three 
ayahuasca ceremonies per week. Around my eighth ceremony, I, I almost died. Uh, a lot of people experience near death in ayahuasca ceremonies and it's really just their mind and the medicine trying to teach them how to be grateful for what they have. This was extremely different. Uh, I was in such a weak, vulnerable state. I had taken a really high dose of ayahuasca and it's very safe, by the way, if you take all the parameters in, ch in check. Um, uh, does everyone know what ayahuasca is? D who doesn't know what ayahuasca is? Okay, I'm just going to explain really quickly. Ayahuasca is a vine and a plant brewed together for 72 hours. Both of these pl plant and the vine are found in the Amazon jungle. It's an, an indigenous tradition to take this medicine, experience visions, experience hallucinations, connect to the spirit realm, and heal your physical and spiritual illnesses. And it's getting a lot of traction in, in, in the world because it's been doing a great job at healing uh, depression. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's a drink. You take, you trip out, trip out. It's more than, way deeper than that, but you trip out for six hours and uh, purge, you know, purge all your toxins out. So anyway, um, where was I? <laughs> um, uh, the dieta, right? Yeah, thank you. I, I may need that a couple times through this. So, so uh, I'm, I'm at, during the dieta, I almost died. They, they, uh, I drank a second cup of medicine. The shamans, uh, about a half hour into it, I start purging out of both ends, unlike anything I've ever experienced, really feeling like I was going to die. At some point, my body went totally cold. The shamans were coming and doing their magic with their blankets, which is not stuff that's normally done in ceremonies. They were just coming up to me and, and just fanning away these spirits, whatever you want to call it, energies that were trying to in invade or infiltrate or, uh, or, or this in their, in their eyes they knew exactly what was happening. I was really on the line of the transitioning to the spirit world and, um, and uh, my body went cold. I actually left my body, uh, was feeling good for the first time in two years and wanted to die, was ready to go. I said, this is it. I'm ready to go. Take me. I've had enough. I can't win this game. I can't win. Take me. So... Uh, the sh uh, eventually, when I got done, like settled back into my body, I looked at the shamans and I, and I asked them in my Spanish, my broken Spanish, like, cerca de muerte, like, near to death. And they said, and they, they were la we were all laughing at the end of the ceremony. Shamans always laugh, no matter what. <laughs> and no matter what, you literally almost died, and they laugh, because they know everything is part of some greater thing. So nothing's bad, nothing's good. But I looked at them and I said, cerca de muerte, and they said, See, sí, amigo, no más ayahuasca para tú. No more ayahuasca for you, right? No more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, believe it or not, I still drink ayahuasca after that. I drank uh, teaspoons, little teaspoons of, of ayahuasca. Uh, I had nowhere else to go. It was home and psych hospital or die trying. Eventually, after one month, I tapped out. And uh, how am I on time? Good? Okay. Eventually, after one month, I, I, I uh, tapped out, and uh, I flew to Miami. My best friend was in Miami, and uh, I couldn't go home in this state. I mean, I was panicking 24-7. I don't even know how I made it home. I was emaciated. I was 30 pounds lighter than I am now. I'm pretty lean right now. 30 pounds lighter, tortured every second of the day, couldn't sleep for a minute. Uh, the realm of hungry ghosts, okay? That's where I was after all of this spiritual work to be in that realm, that you don't know what kind of brokenness I experience. I go to Miami, my best friend, who I wouldn't have made it with without, he, still, he paid for my float tanks, he paid for my, my, my massages, he paid for all my groceries, and he let me stay in his bedroom. And there was a couple times where I almost jumped off the balcony, and I would, he lived on the 21st floor, and I, uh, and I just would run into his room and ask him to choke me out unconscious. I taught him a jiu-jitsu move, a triangle choke that would cut off my carotid arteries, put me to sleep for 10 seconds because I was so scared that I was going to kill myself. So I did that. I had him choke me out about three or four times, and he put me out. And, uh, and uh, he saved my life by doing that. And uh, I wasn't... Uh, basically it would provide me with you know, five seconds of relief to remember who I am, to remember that I am not that pain, that I am not that tormenting voice inside my head. So I left Miami, a more broken man than ever. I go home and uh, remember, I thought the hospital was rock bottom. And uh, <clears throat> I start planning my escape for, uh, 
for life. I remember I, I told myself if I was ever going to get to this point where I was going to kill myself, that I would go and do iboga in Africa. Iboga is another plant medicine. It's a root bark. It's a 36-hour hallucin hallucination. Most people, many people experience a full hallucinogenic reset, a dissolving of the ego for a short while, and then it's up to them to continue living that life or to choose the, the pain again. But this was the last, my, la my last straw. So I quietly and cautiously planned my trip to Africa. The plan was that if it didn't work for me, I was going uh, to go into the woods and I was going to... Uh, fast until I died. Uh, I was you know, not going to bring any water with me and not any food and go somewhere to the point where it was so hot uh, that I would just die there and I wouldn't have a chance of making it. And I, uh, I, wrote letters to, uh, I wrote letters to my family and I wrote letters to all my friends. I gave my friend my social media passwords and everything. And uh, I wrote, put it all in an email form that I had in my draft and I never sent it. I was going to send it right before getting on the plane to Africa. Keep in mind, I, I had no money at this time. It was all done on credit cards. I opened up $20,000 worth of credit cards at the time. And, um, and uh, so yeah, I was two days away from going to Africa and I start just ruminating. Really, God, the universe came to me and was telling me, Mercury, 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 your fillings, your fillings. I had these Mercury fillings, these amalgam fillings that were all on the right side of my mouth. And um, so, fucking I, I really, you know, just so close to leaving, and I, I wouldn't have made it. I would not. Have, Iboga would have killed me. If ayahuasca almost did, Iboga would for sure have killed me. So, long story short, it was a very long story. I did not make it short. <laughs> um, I went from that guy being near death, literally peeing in a bucket in my room panicking 24-7, inability to be with myself for more than, se like, every second, I would just count down, okay, don't kill yourself this hour. Just go till 3 p.m. without killing yourself. Just fucking do that. Just make it to 3 p.m. every single hour of the day. Every single hour, okay? To now, in the past seven months, doing a very, very detailed, systematic, intense, detox with heavy metals and parasites and chemicals. Uh, I'm feeling great. Actually, in this moment, I feel like shit from travel, but I've been feeling amazing. My depression's gone. My panic is gone. Uh, I have an amazing girlfriend. Uh, I have an amazing business. Uh, in seven fucking months, and now I'm here talking to you guys about it, which is even just the next level of ridiculousness. So, uh, that's my resurrection. This is the new, I don't even know who Josh Mason is anymore. This is some new guy who took over. <laughs> I don't, I'm feeling, let's put it this way, I'm feeling better than I've ever felt in my life before even getting ill. So um, now let's go into the lessons, right? What can we learn from, from illness? From so oh, here are some pictures. <laughs> All right, this is my, this is my Gabonese uh, visa that I had, I just, just to, you know, I guess show proof. You, you don't really get those unless you have a direct invite into the country and you already have a flight. So you know that I had already spent the fucking money <laughs> by getting that visa. These are some pictures from the Dieta. Uh, I, I, this was the beginning of the Dieta, so I lost like about another 20 pounds after that. So you can imagine how sickly I was. And this is the jungle here. And this is a pat worm, one of probably 600 that I've released. Um, that was, look at the way I look here. You'd, you'd think I was in shape and I was a jujitsu guy and I was in, you know, tough. Let me tell you something. You can be the best looking, fucking most jacked dude in the world and you can just have a fucking belly filled with these parasites, eating your nutrients, fucking you up, shitting and pissing in your body, okay? Parasites are all over right now. They're all over. And me, the way the, uh, I'll get into it. All right, lessons from the other side. The big thing is that we have allowed, and there's many speakers who have already talked about this, we have allowed our conditioned minds to run the show. The mind that the, the, the peep, the, the, what our parents tell us and what society tells us and what the TV tells us, it has all been, all this conditioning, okay, has totally hijacked you as a true human spiritual soul. You, you almost don't even have free will with all the trauma and psychological onslaught that's going on. 
And the, the thing is, is that, you know, there, there's a, Daniel Everett, I like telling this story. There's a guy, Daniel Everett, who went to the Amazon jungle in Brazil. He met with, he was a missionary, and he met with these people to try and convert them to Christianity. So he started talking about Jesus to them after uh, two years of living with them and gaining their trust. He would continue to bring up Jesus. Eventually, they asked him, after months of him talking about Jesus, he was like, what did Jesus look like? Did you know him? And he said, no, I didn't know him. This is from many, many years ago. Oh, so your father must have known Jesus. What did your father say about Jesus? No, my father doesn't know Jesus. We're, dude, we're talking about fucking, you know, a long, long time ago. Oh, so your grandfather clearly knew Jesus then, because otherwise you wouldn't be talking about him. He said, no, man, what the fuck? They don't know how to listen to, go- to, to gospel, to, to, to chatter. They live in the moment. They, li- they, they, they never give another man advice. This is the, the Piraha people. If you look it up, all right, it's called, uh, the name of the book is called, uh, don't sleep, there are snakes. Amazing book. Okay, the, the Paraha people, and uh, they don't fucking listen to anybody. They only listen to what they experience and what they know to be true based on their experience with life and their connection with the divine. Everything else is bullshit and they don't even talk about it. In our country, in our world, most of the world is operating on a completely opposite paradigm. We have the medical doctors telling us something or the news reporter telling us something and we just believe it and say, oh my God, so scary. They're right. I'm, I have to be scared. I, have to, I need these doctors to save my life. I'm so scared. They want us to be like that all the time. And that needs to stop. When that stops, when that shifts in an individual level, which pretty much everyone in this room, you wouldn't be here if that didn't already shift, that's, uh, that's when the big shifts are going to happen on the planet. So the upside of my illness was that I totally shattered my mind. Shattered. My collective mind was gone. I had no, I would laugh when people would like talk to me about things like, oh, scientists say this or this. I would literally just laugh. I didn't know how to, I, I didn't know how to talk to people anymore because they, I just felt like they weren't talking from their experience. They were talking from what they'd been taught. And uh, so that's the upside, right? I now had a clean slate to start on. So the truth of the matter is I'm not a doctor, right? I'll never be, but many doctors and I went to fucking a lot of doctors. I don't even know if I put that in the story. <laughs> Checking me out and my blood and all this fondling my nuts. <laughs> they had nothing to say. They were totally, did have no fucking advice whatsoever. And I know a lot of people, majority of people with health issues actually have the same thing to say. That these conventional Western medicine just does not cut it. We have totally isolated each individual body part saying, oh, you have a problem with your arm, you have a cancer on your arm, let's cut it out. We are one big universe in this body, one big planet in this body. Everything is interconnected. Every single person you know is connected to you in some way. Every single word that you speak is all part of something. It's a tapestry. It's no such thing as just an isolated incident. Like, Oh, I lost my job. What the fuck? No, man. It's all part of the flow of life. It's all, this is all one big flow. And you cannot connect to the flow until you detox. Well, you can, but it's much harder. Okay. Sad truth. 100,000 new chemicals have been introduced in the past sem- century. Our detox mechanisms just simply have not caught up to this. Okay? We have all these chemicals coming in, industrial processes and planting of foods and and everything. Everything you can imagine is chemicals, soaps, shampoos, everything you probably have in your freaking pantry unless you really put effort into your health is chemicals. Everything in the grocery store is chemicals. It's not real, okay? It's poison. And we have an exponential growth of depression, schizophrenia, autism, anxiety, panic, diabetes, ADD, and pharmaceutical drugs. Many of these things didn't even exist 80 years ago. They didn't even see it. They didn't know what it was. Okay, we are heading down a really bad fucking path right now, okay? This is PCBs in breast milk. This is flame retardants in breast milk that they have studied in women. And uh, exponential growth of PCBs in breast milk, okay? This is, uh, your, when the second you're born, you're literally taking in milk and flame retardants from your mother's breasts. If you're lucky enough to have gotten breastfed, most people get sugar water from the fucking uh, insurer or whatever they sell for babies, which is poison. Okay, this is uh, the rates of autism in the world. Exponential growth again, okay? By 2025, we're going to hit the vertical line of exponential growth. Whenever you have exponential growth, you eventually hit a vertical line. 
which is basically you're fucked. That's, ba that's basically what it means. In 2025, we're going to hit that vertical line, according to the research now. We never know what will actually happen. And one in out of, out of every two people, children, are going to be born, born with autism. So something that did not exist 60, 70 years ago is now going to be one out of every two children by the year 2025. And this sounds crazy if, you've never, if you haven't been personally touched by a disease or if your family hasn't been, or if you don't know an autistic child. Uh, it's hard to believe, right? You just, most people just can't believe it. Um, but working in my field, I can tell you it's bad. It's really bad. Okay, worldwide epidemic, loneliness, depression, suicide, addiction, lack of fulfillment. Like I said, the doctors are telling us everything is genetic, everything is, uh, you, you know, you, you're born with it, you're fucked, you have to take these pills until you, until you, uh, until you make it. Or and, and you have to take these pills for the rest of your life. Um, that's your only option. You, you cannot cure this disease. And uh, something funny about Chinese medicine, actually, the, the Chinese medicine practitioners, you would pay them until you got sick. And as soon as you got sick, you'd stop paying them until they made you healthy again. In our country, it's the exact opposite, right? You fucking give them your entire bank account. Can you give me chemotherapy? Can you give me more poison in my body and to try and destroy my body even more and take all my money in the process? Uh, in Chinese medicine, um, total, total opposite. They, they, they literally wouldn't accept your payment until they got you well. All right, I'm getting there. I'm getting into the, the detox stuff. Sorry, got a lot to talk about. So, colons, uh, our colons have turned into cesspools. With our diet of processed foods from the time we were young children, incorrect food combinations, too much meat and not enough veggies, overeating, shitting incorrectly, which by the way, the reason we have hemorrhoids is because of all of because of our diet, but also because you're not supposed to sit on a toilet. Like everywhere in nature, if you watch any animal in nature, they squat, which is why they have something called the squatty po the squatty potty, is they saw, sell now where you lift your feet up when you're on the toilet. Because when you shit like this, you're creating an improper relationship between your rectum and your colon. When you shit correctly, I don't know, my pants are a little tight, but <laughs> when you shit like that, like a dog, you'll notice your shits will be bigger. Okay, <laughs> so, so the issue here is that we all have, unless you've done some serious work, we all have decades worth of impacted fecal matter in our colon, okay? Impacted junk, putrefied, fermenting, rotting fecal matter that's literally just getting reabsorbed through the bloodstream, okay? I see some people sleeping. I'm like, damn, I'm doing a really shitty job then. Um, all right, so... Uh, all this Im I impacted fecal matter, okay? You cannot connect to the divine into a high frequency when you have all of this junk in your intestines, okay? You're forced to the lower vibrational frequencies of gotta make money, gotta listen to the news, gotta do this, like, all, like a robot. You, this makes it a lot easier to become a robot when you have... There's a, there's, a, there's a doctor named Harvey Kellogg. He did 200,000 colon surgeries, and in the 200,000 surgeries he did in Michigan... He did not find one colon that looked the way it should in a textbook, smooth, folding in the right, in the right spots. They were all the, the colons were all folded in on, each, on itself, turned in on itself, and just swollen and not operating. Our colon is our, literally our whole life. These intestines are our entire life. And to keep your, to keep your, your tubes filthy, okay, and the small intestine, our whole intestines, to keep your tubes filthy is like giving your engine, it's like having a gas tank filled with literally like the worst possible thing for your car, whatever that may be, sugar. That's what they say, sugar can ruin a gas tank. But um, so the, the, the fecal matter, the impacted junk has to go. It has to go for you to really achieve your, in this lifetime, to achieve who you are as a soul, as a medicine. We all have a medicine for this planet. That's without a doubt. We all have a purpose and a journey and until you really clean your vessel, you, it's really, really hard to find that journey and find that purpose. I'll answer after. Yeah, yeah. I got you, though. Uh, the next step after fecal matter, okay, that the Chinese med and Ayurvedic practitioners really didn't nail because they didn't really deal with it as much as we're dealing with in our generation, 
is parasites, heavy metals, plastics, flame retardants, pesticides, fertilizers, insecticides, all deeply embedded inside of our tissues and organs, our brain, okay? Um, so all of this stuff is coming from, all, from a very young age. We're being inundated with these toxins in our food, in the seafood, in our shampoos, in our in soaps, in everything that you put on your body for the most part if you're in a conventional lifestyle, it's, it's toxins. It's not natural for the body. And all of this stuff is very multi-generational, okay? All of this pain is multi-generational coming down from your parents and their parents, and it's this virus that we've t taken on. It's the best way to describe it is like a virus. This virus of being, uh, of needing more, of greed, of hatred, of sickness, of, 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 of murder, of hunger, this virus, this multi-generational virus of not really being a loving being, it all comes, in my opinion, the majority of it comes from faulty blueprints, right, being taught the wrong way to live life by our parents and society, and it also comes from toxins um, from, uh, from uh, passed down, right, through, through the placenta, through breast milk. Uh, all of these toxins come right from your mother to you especially if you're a firstborn male. That's really who has it the worst. Um, but you get your, the metals and the plastics and everything just gets fused into you, right? So all of this, of course, is exacerbated by trauma. If you've had a really rough childhood, you know, it makes it 100 times worse. When you're traumatized, you hold everything that's bad, you hold it instead of releasing. So that applies to the physical toxins as well as your spiritual, emotional beliefs, right? Um... So this man, very, very brilliant man, one of the greatest inventors of all time, he died uh, penniless. <laughs> but if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Okay? With all of this junk in our intestines, we just do not have a chance at connecting to the awe, to the beauty, to the wonder of life. We just don't have a shot. Okay? The, <laughs> the booby prize, okay? the money, the cars, the fancy watch, the hot superficial girlfriend, the vacations, your health insurance, all that, the big house, all of that shit is the booby prize. It's the second place prize that we're, most of the planet is chasing and dying after, okay? It's the second place prize. The grand prize that they don't want you to know about is love. It's a, it's a hum of love in your belly, okay? In your heart in your soul, it's well-being, it's peace. That's the grand prize. Because when you have that, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters when you have that. This well-being, just a, it's a sort of humming feeling. It's a, you can't really talk about it, you can only feel it, right? And some people have never felt it, right? And some people live there. Heaven and hell are states of consciousness we live in this lifetime, we have in this lifetime, okay? So that's the real life's work, is achieving love in your vessel achieving a relationship with yourself where you love yourself and you love life and you do that by getting rid of shit. You don't do it by adding shit on like we've been taught all our lives. You don't need to learn anything else, okay? Or do more self-help or do more any of that. It's just about getting rid of the junk. <laughs> we are fucked. So I'm going to get into being positive in a second, right? But <laughs> I, I promise you... <laughs> Uh, but uh, basically, if you talk to any, if you do any research on any scientist or researcher who's top in their field of climate change or, or marine wildlife or anything of this sort, they will literally all say the same thing. Even NASA research scientists will say the same thing. Like, we are so fucked. We, we're on a trajectory that's unspeakable, and we don't know why the world isn't changing. That's, that's, their, that's, the, what the, that's in their scientific way on paper is what it says for all of the same, all these researchers, okay? Now let's get out of all that pain and negativity. Let's bring it to how we can change, okay? We have to move away from the ego, away from greed, the materialistic paradigm that we live in, and move into love, abundance. We have to move to a win-win. It's not that person wins, now I lose. That person has more, now I have less. That's bullshit. There's so much abundance in this world. They win, I win. That's how life is. That's the cycle of nature, the flow of nature. You give and receive at the same time. This is every single animal in nature, every single plant in nature gives and receives at the same time. 
okay? And we are so isolated from nature right now. We are so far away, as far away as humanly possible without being an apocalypse from, from nature. Okay, here's how you reverse the curse, okay? Reversing the curse, of course, all the spiritual work is amazing, life-changing for some. That gets them to the place they need to be, okay? For others, it, you're really, really walking uphill uh, with spiritual work alone, right? My experience was proof of that. You have to detox, okay? So malnourishment, toxicity, and parasites are the three things responsible for all mental illness, okay? I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to tell you with every part of my soul that there are very few people who are really mentally ill and just mentally ill and check them off as mentally ill, okay? I don't believe it because I walked that line, okay? I walked that line for many years, and uh, I'm well now, okay? And... There's no, I just don't believe it. You never hear me say that person doesn't have a chance. If you can replenish nutrients, reduce the toxicity, and get rid of that person's parasites, they will be the person they were meant to be on this planet. When one of those gets worse, the other two get worse. It's a death spiral, okay? Most of us are operating at 50% is like a high estimate, a 50% capacity of what were possible, you know, energy-wise, energy what we're accomplishing, how we're feeling, uh, just what we're giving to the planet. I mean, most people are just totally drones and just totally uh, numb and turned off. And uh, they're not, they're, they're, I mean, the movies really point uh, in this direction, right? They talk about like something like the movie Limitless or the movie, uh, you know, Avatar. The reason we love the movie Avatar it's not because of all those graphics and all that shit. The reason we love Avatar is because we are both of those fused into one being. We are the spirit that's living in the jungle, and we are the human who's searching for the unobtainian, unobtainian the, whatever the hell, the, 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 the money that they were searching for. We are both of those things in one vessel, and we only know about one of them right now. The reason we love that movie and the reason we love a lot of these movies is because they point to our deepest desires for freedom, for spiritual freedom, Okay, we are that infinite soul having a human experience. Okay, that's what we are, and that's why we love a movie like Avatar. Okay, so uh, here's the, the, the order of operations. You replenish your nutrients the whole way through your program, which really should be your rest of your life. You heal your gut, kill parasites, and then you chelate metals and toxins. Okay, so uh, here's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid homogenized and pasteurized dairy. It's all junk. Okay, it's all, they take a medicine, which is true healthy cow's milk, if it's a healthy cow, and they heat it to outrageous temperatures until all of the life force energy is gone. All of the light is actually gone out of that product. It becomes a deadened product, okay? Um, avoid all sugar, uh, even fruit. I mean, it sounds crazy, but in this day and age with how toxic we are, fruit is actually very detrimental. The, the, insulin, the insulin response and sugar is very, very toxic. And actually, there's some uh, psychiatrists who, back in the day, when psychiatry actually meant something, they were, they were treating people schizophrenics by just taking out all the sugar in their diet. That's how they treated schizophrenics, and it worked miracles. Um, so get rid of all inorganic GMO, veggies, meat, grains, eggs, all that stuff is just so toxic. The, the meat that a lot of, I mean, the meat's better in this country than it is in the United States. I've saw, seen that right away, but uh, still for the most part, it's, um, it's, uh, it's shit. Um, so, and then of course, when something's inorganic, that means that there's, they're using inorganic fertilizers. They're spraying it with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, these crazy, literally chemicals that if you touch to your tongue, you would have a crazy reaction to. But it's sprayed on and it's infused with the plant and you're, I mean, it's living inside the plant and you're ingesting this. And it's, to eat, in, in, to eat inorganic on a regular basis is, it's insanity, okay? It really is insanity and I know a lot of people here do it and there's no judgment. It's like, this is the world we live in. But to eat inorganic is like, you might as well just be hitting yourself every single day a little bit, like on the head with something really hard. <laughs> um, okay, so, oh, should, I, should I give it a little rest? Is everyone, is this too much? It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot. So, vaccines, seafood, and tap water. Vaccines, when we're children, 
Can you believe we get injected? Okay, we get injected with something called thimisterol. Thimisterol is aluminum and mercury, the two most powerful neurotoxins on the planet. Mercury is the second most on the planet. Aluminum is one of the highest, but um, two of the most toxic elements on planet Earth injected into our bloodstream at a very young age, okay? <laughs> with, of course, with the vaccine. They use it as a binding agent. Thimisterol is a binding agent. And this is common knowledge. You can Google this. It's all common knowledge. It's, it's not, there's nothing like cutting edge about this. This has been known for a long, long time, but we just aren't aware of it. So uh, we get injected with this at a very young age. My, my friend is a teacher. He said he always knows when children have been vaccinated or at least given all of their vaccinations because they have, uh, the light is basically taken out of them. They're just like, there's some children who are very bright, some children who are very like shadowy and just dark and those are in low energy, always sleeping. Those are always the children he finds. Uh, he owns a massive Montessori school in New York City. Uh, and those are always the children he finds that are, are, are uh, vaccinated. That's always the common correlation. So seafood, uh, Oh, by the way, let me just make a legal disclaimer here. I am not a doctor, okay? <laughs> I could probably get sued for some of this shit. So, <laughs> so um, sea, uh, seafood is all horribly contaminated with heavy metals. Our oceans are the most contaminated part of our planet. Uh, there's just, I could talk about this entire speech about how bad our oceans are, but um, the seafood is with mercury and mercury just from factories, right? The mercury goes up into the air, it rains, it goes into the ocean. Um, and uh, uh, tap water, okay, tap water. I don't know how it is in London, but what I will say in the United States, we've had a lot of things like Flint, Michigan, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, like lead, the children are drinking l uh, water with lead. That's the least of, our, of w actually what's going on. That's just what's made public. The truth of the matter is, is that with tap water, and especially the way it's done in the United States, probably similar here, you actually get pharmaceutical drugs, right? When people flush pharmaceutical drugs down the toilet or they pee it out, uh, the system does not f filter those out. You get pharmaceutical drugs, heavy metals, viruses, pathogens, bacteria, toxins, all in the tap water. It's literally the li elixir of life that's fueling our every single minute of our day. Most people are drinking toxic elixir of life, <laughs> as toxic as it gets without you being able to really taste it. And you can taste it once you switch over. Which by the way, chlorine and fluoride are both in our, uh, are also in our water, especially in the United States, both of which are pineal gland calcifiers. Our pineal gland is our third eye that connects us to, uh, to uh, spirituality, to the spiritual realm. And most, in most 18 year old Westerners, on an fMRI machine, they'll literally show as a rock. It looks like a rock in most 18-year-olds, okay? Because it's an, a gland that's not working. It's not working. And all the Bible, all, a, all traditions talk about the, the third eye, and we don't learn about it. And a lot of people don't even know what it is. And they, we say that that's crazy, okay? It's a gland. It's a physical gland that's living in, it's inside your brain. So this chlorine and fluoride calcify it, make it totally fucked unusable, and that's when you can't connect to the, the other realm of spirit, the other realm of love, and that's when you're forced into that lower vibration that, we're, that I'm talking about. Okay, <coughs> starch and protein in the same meal. Italians are doing it all wrong with spaghetti and meatballs. That is like a poison combo. Mixing a starch and a protein, it becomes an indigestible combination, okay? This is trophology, the Chinese art of food combining, something to get into if you want to start diving deep with nu nutrition. Uh, all synthetic vitamins and minerals, they're all toxic. Our body can't assimilate them. Uh, for the most part, it's, uh, it's junk. Okay, and then Sasha talked about this in the beginning, which I loved. I didn't, I didn't know so many people were onto this, but petite mort. In French, they call an ejaculation for a male a petite mort, a little death. Um, it's a false mission accomplished, right? You're, you're on here as mystery, the pickup artist says. You're on here this planet to survive and replicate. If you're jerking off and... Uh, this isn't going on YouTube, right? <laughs> if you're masturbating, uh, <laughs> if you're having your way with yourself, um, <laughs> uh, if, if, if you're doing that on a regular basis, you're taking your life force, your chi, okay, the most potent, sex, sexual energy is our most potent form of energy. You're taking it, flushing it down the toilet, okay, but 
Uh, furthermore, you're telling yourself on a very deeply biochemical level that you have succeeded at your mission of replicating. Okay, you have you literally the, the buildup is so intense in your body that you have to masturbate to release that tension and then say, oh, okay, Josh, you did good job, you know, good job. You don't have to work now, you know, you don't have to go uh, better yourself or make yourself more attractive. Okay, so it's so important to keep that chi in to heal your body, and that alone, like, forget everything I've said up until this point. If you just stop masturbating as a man your entire life will change. Your entire life will change. I mean, you know, once a month or whatever. And in the winter, try and go as long as you can. Uh, in the winter, you need that chi a lot more. But yeah, your whole life will change. And, and you're, you're going to have trouble keep containing all that energy. And it feels unpleasant. Um, but what you'll do is you'll slowly learn how to contain more and more and more and more. And uh, you become your true, you know, your true potential. And you become a man, you know, a real man. But, you're, but you also have to balance, of course, with the feminine energy. We are both. I get so off track so many times. Okay. Uh, amalgam fillings, uh, get them removed by a holistic dentist. That should be step one. You, if you have mercury fillings, the silver ones that are metal, literally just start uh, doing research for a holistic dentist and getting it done uh, in the correct fashion. It's, I opened up uh, medical credit cards to get, to get them out. I opened up you know, $4,000 of medical credit cards to get them out and... Uh, money, you know, the concept of money disappears when it's talking about something that's consistently poisoning. You breathe in this vapor and y it crosses your blood-brain barrier instantly because, by the way, these fillings do leak. Okay, it's been totally proven. Crosses your blood-brain barrier, totally, just totally messing you up on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Uh, continued, real life's work. Start getting, drinking clean water, clean spring water. I think this Volvic here is pretty good. It has a lot of silica, which is really important for detox. But it's in plastic bottles, and we don't know how the transport, transporting is, is in, if it's in the heat. Uh, but it's, I guess it's a little co cooler in this country. But um, really, unless you're in somewhere where you're getting clean spring water, or you know that bottled water is great and it's not being heated by, from manufacturing <laughs> to arrival, uh, uh, Big Berkey is a great alternative. Big Berkey is a $300 water filter that will change your life. Um, and... Uh, yeah, get that. Um, you want to start incorporating cooked and raw organic veggies. They're both good. If you, want, if you eat a lot of cooked foods, maybe take some digestive enzymes with it. Uh, organic free-range eggs are a great, great, great food. And you don't want to overcook these. You, wanna, you want the yolk to be liquidy. So you want to either eat them raw, if you know they're good, without you know, just getting rid of, just having the yolk raw, or uh, soft poaching them. There's soy is less, uh, lecithin and... Um, sulfur in the uh, egg yolks that we need for detox that get denatured when you, when you heat them up. Okay, so then free-range chicken and grass-fed beef, if you can handle it, this is all great foods, if you can handle it, some bodies just cannot tolerate it. Nutrient-dense foods, okay? This is really where it's at. This stuff, most people have probably never heard of any of it, but we got colostrum, which is the first milking of a cow. When a cow is a baby, they release this elixir, literally this medicine elixir that comes out first with so much nutrients uh, and minerals and vitamins and they make it in freeze-dried form and you can take it. Black maca, shilajit, which is a resin that comes from the Himalayan mountains. Maki berry, moringa, marine phytoplankton, bone broth, ghee, makuna, kamu berry, royal jelly, pine pollen, kintan. These are all incredibly nutrient-dense, mineral-dense superfoods that you can order online. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put on my website a link for all of the brands for these because you brands are equally important as the supplement itself um so i'll, I'll i didn't include it in the powerpoint but if you want to write it down it's going to be uh the detox dudes.com slash infinite man i'll do that um just so all you guys can get the links to everything um so the other essential now this is very very this is all the basics right this is just so you can take this information and make changes in your life right away um Kelp, whole food source B, C, D, algae oil, glutamine, spirulina, slippery elm, nettle. Slippery elm is really effective at healing the gut, the mucosal layer of our gut, which is really, when people have severe food allergies and everything they eat makes them tired no matter how healthy, or uh, that's generally leaky gut or serious gas all the time or indigestion, just poor digestion. Um, and when I was at my worst, I just I couldn't digest any food. I just, there's nothing that would digest. It would just ferment there. 
um, that was torture, you know. So my digestion, my digestion is incredible now. Um, so, yeah, these are all great stuff. I mean, I could go deep into why each one is great. But honestly, like, most people don't really want to be a detox expert. They just want to learn how to feel better. <laughs> so, you know, you, we, we can at some point, you know, if, if whatever. Uh, uh, let me see if there's anything that's really important that I should talk about. Um, yeah, like stuff like royal jelly. Royal jelly and colostrum, marine phytoplankton, these are... These are found in nature that are actually in, uh, completely whole foods. They have like everything the human body needs all in one little piece of nature, right? It's really a miracle. The, the universe has given us these things to sustain us, um, but we're kind of just eating all the wrong ones. And back when it did work, like eating juicing to detox and stuff like that, um, we're simply just, our, our vegetables are so devoid of nutrients because the soils are fucked, right? The soils are messed up. And uh, the, 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 they don't contain, the, if the soils don't contain the minerals and the nutrients, neither do the vegetables, okay? So that's what we're working with. That's why it's important to supplement. It's really, it's crucial to supplement nutrient-dense foods. Um, here's step one, okay? You got your fillings out or you don't have fillings. You're just getting rid of all the shit that I talked about, the avoid list. You start drinking clean water. Now you're going to take binders, okay? Now... I want to make I want to make it clear, like, just because you're not crippled crippled with illness, doesn't mean that you're not incredibly toxic. There was actually something I forgot to talk about, which is really important. This is the 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 spectrum, okay? The spectrum of illness, of really crippling illness. You have life on one end, exuberance on this end, pa like just feeling incredible, like a child, like a baby when we were born. You have death on this side. Crippling illness comes a lot closer to death than it does to life. It just so happens that the body reaches a body burden point where it can no longer sustain you, where it's like, dude, I've told you a hundred times to stop putting that shit in your body. Like, why do you keep drinking? You know, like every morning I wake up and I tell you to stop fucking putting that in your body and you don't listen to me. Eventually it hits a point where it's just like, and that's when my two week illness happened. It was a body burden point of, dude, I'm giving up on you. Like, fuck you. I'm shutting off. And it's important to not hit that point. And we are all, as a collective, dealing with the same illness. We're dealing with the same toxicity coming from the same sources. So, you know, even if you're feeling like, man, I'm feeling okay and, and uh, you know, and, and I'm fine and I, I don't think I have toxins, you're literally guilty by association just from being alive in today's time. You cannot avoid the toxins. You can't. And I'm not trying to make you scared or anything like that or instill fear, but it's important to not allow your, uh, to only think that you need a detox if you're crippled, right? It's foolish to think that way. Okay, so, which by the way, um, one of my important, my important lessons from, from, uh, from my illness and from healing is that everything comes together beautifully when you have your health. When you have your well, your well-being and your health, and everything's intact, the rest of life comes together. Like the, the 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 you know the learning about picking up girls and the learning about business and all that stuff, everything starts to work in a beautiful tapestry in a beautiful uh, amazing way when you do when you get your health back. So anyway, okay, these are all binders. Okay, very 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 important stuff. These are negatively charged substances that we put in our body. Take them orally in water. And you do not digest them. They attract all of the positively charged junk in your intestines, all the stuff that's alongside the colon walls, all of the old junk inside, the heavy metals. And you start sucking it up like a vacuum and allowing for a release. If you can take some gentle Gaia herbal laxative tea is a good gentle laxative tea to take because binders do cause constipation. Or you can get some, uh, some colonics. Colonics are great too. Uh, try and get like something called the Kalima Board of California. It's a three hundred dollar board. You can do colonics in your own, in your own home. Okay, so kaidosan, microsilica, charcoal, takasumi, which is bamboo charcoal, zeobind, and bentonite clay. These are all stuff that are gonna just suck up all the junk. Okay, and uh, and suck up all the the positively charged junk, parasites, uh, <coughs> um, metals, chemicals, all that stuff. 
Chlorella and Eclonia cava are two good binders as well, but they actually are digested by the body and they, they have nutrient content unlike the others. Um, I think we're coming close to the end. Yeah, so these, yeah, close your eyes. Let me, let me warn everyone first. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> if you are really nauseous and you just ate, right? So let's try and get someone to throw up here. Um, if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you don't want to see this or if it just bu bugs you out, uh, just to leave the room or turn around. These are all parasites that I, either I released or my clients released. Um, and this, I have some, so much more gross pictures. But this is all, uh, so these are like, these are, I, I think these are rope worms. That's a, round, uh, that's a round worm. I don't even know what this funky thing is. This is candida here, right? So this all comes out with suppositories. Most, most things, like the conventional health, conventional health stuff is, uh, conventional health is like, uh, they tell you to take wormwood and clove internally, and, that, that, and you buy like a 14-day parasite, para be gone kit, you know, stuff like that. That's total utter bullshit. I've done so many of those and nothing came out. Parasites, these are all, you know, like, I literally thought that parasites were only things that came out of like starving children in Africa who had like those swollen bellies, but... Growing up in New Jersey, USA, never eating anything raw or out of the ordinary, never doing anything crazy. This, they did not come from the Amazon because uh, a lot of the worms that I got rid of uh, were way too big to, to, to be, uh, to have, they lived in me for decades the, by the growth, si the sizes of them. I mean, I, I did a lot of research on this shit. So anyway, what I'm saying is that you can have parasites and they are all over uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's not something to be scared of, but it's just, you know, if you really want to connect to the love, to the love vibration, to the light, to your true potential as a human being, you just got to get rid of them. They're not serving you, you know, and it's, it's very, there's parasites in the spirit world. There's parasites in a human relationship when you feel like there's, par like someone has a parasitic relationship or they, they, where they feed on you or when you're around them. It's all the same shit, right? It's like, these are just so happen to be masterminds at physically parasite like sucking your energy and sucking your life force and your vitamins and nutrients and they've found clever ways to get inside the body and and multiply and when we don't take care of our health they they just they, they take over i mean i had a belly fill, filled with these things you know and i was working pretty hard but of course mercury poisoning by the way heavy metal poisoning always leads to parasites it's like one goes with the other um, because your mucosal layer gets damaged the parasites have a much better environment to thrive I think that's it. The, the, the only last thing I'll say, wait, do I have one more slide? Oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget, love yourself. This is a little bear loving himself. That's, that's the biggest medicine right there. Detox and love yourself, and the rest of life will just whew, magically fall into place. No, it doesn't come from the mind. It doesn't come from this chatter that we always have, of doing, being, and, you know. It's, it comes from somewhere else. There's some grand magic at play, a very big magic, universal orchestration that we have to listen to. And that's my email. If anyone wants to email me, tell me I, I did a great job or tell me I sucked, uh, that's great. And that's me on Facebook, the Detox Dudes. That's my Twitter. I, I don't even have, I, I haven't done that in like a year and a half, but uh, whatever. That's, that's me. Thank you. <laughs> time for questions you know oh oh i forgot yeah, yeah, about do that a couple, if there are some oh yeah can you put it back on on the last slide so i'll do it I forgot about the question thing i mean you don't have to but you know, <laughs> no i would love wanna. that yeah yeah i uh yeah <coughs> everyone looks am i on here hello hello everyone looks super tired from uh from lunch, right? No. Now? You probably yeah. ate shitty food. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank you because you are, you know, it was hard for you to come on stage and I really respect that, so thank you for that. Wow. Um, yeah, what I'm really curious about is that this is kind of fresh for you, like uh -huh. all the emotions and things. Yeah. Um, what's ahead in the future? How are you going to because you're still in it, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm correct. <coughs> well, 
I'm definitely in healing, but I've crossed over to the land of the light, right? So healing is really an ongoing thing. Um, when you get deep into it, healing is an ongoing process for the rest of life. It's not like you just one day become a guru or healed or no more pain. There's always human pain. Um, I'm feeling pretty amazing, and I still feel like I'm only at like 70% of where I'm going to be, you know, when, when it comes to my health. It really, to be as sick as I was, it really, it really takes two years uh, to just totally go back to a homeostasis, you know, to go back to a, um, uh, being toxin-free or, or close to it. So uh, the plan for me, uh, I got my business, and I have a, a, a lady at home, and right now it looks like, like I just settle somewhere and just be a normal human being because three years of ayahuasca, uh, I went a little too far into the spirit world. And uh, it feels good to be a human again, like talking to other humans. You know, like I was just on a different planet. And so, yeah, I'm just going to stay grounded, stay in this planet, not mess with any hallucinogens for a while, and uh, help people transform their health. That's the plan. Great. Thank you. Let's go over there in the, uh, yeah, in the gray shirt. Thank you for the talk. Yeah. The talk was amazing, dude. Thank so, you. Thank so you. interesting. Thank um, you. I do have two short questions. The first yeah. question is, you talked about shitting, <laughs> that you should squat. Yeah. How do you do this in the Western world? Because you only have the normal toilet. <laughs> Say it again. Um, you said um, the shit. Uh, oh, how do I shit without a toilet? Y no, in or the Western world, you only have those normal toilets where you sit. Yeah. Oh, so a lot of times I actually... <laughs> 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 you caught me. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times I go shit in nature, but just like I don't need to. But it's just like there's a lot of woods by me, and why not? You know, uh, a lot, I walk I walk naked in nature a lot. Like I, I literally just walk n naked on barefoot at night and just like <laughs> like like it just connect me with universe. But anyway, if I do if I do use a toilet, which is very often, uh, I'll put my feet up with a garbage can or a, a garbage can. Because you want to just try and minimize the when you when you lift your feet you're you're more in line and you'll notice that your belly is actually a little more relaxed and so but yeah the, the best thing is to just go out in nature and take a dump. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and the second um, very yeah. quick question: um, Do you don't drink alcohol at all? I no. guess. No, Al alcohol is um, alcohol is pretty toxic. It's not as bad as uh, some other things. It's it's very toxic and. When you combine alcohol with an already toxic brain and a candida and parasites, it's just a total, total death spiral. I have had organic wine recently. Um, my first drink in, in 12 months was about three weeks ago, and I had an organic sulfite-free wine, or as close to sulfite-free as possible. And uh, it was delicious, and I didn't have a hangover. Um, but I will say that if you're serious about your health and you're ill, stay away from alcohol for a while. And then if you ever, want, if you ever really want to drink, um, organic sulfite-free wine, or um, what you can do is get something called kava. Kava is like a Hawaiian beverage that's similar to alcohol that's very non-toxic. Um, that would be my, my best suggestion for like, um, you know, there, there's no such thing as a, a free neurological lunch, right? Mm -hmm. Most drugs or substances that you take, that's not free. There's always, you're always paying a price for the feel-good effects of it. Um, Kava's as close to a free neurological lunch as you could get. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was really amazing. Thank Thanks. you, man. Thank you. Uh, what about marijuana? So, <laughs> can, we, can we cut the tape here? Uh, <laughs> marijuana, organic, organic cannabis is incredible medicine. Organic, uh, properly grown with love cannabis is a very potent uh, detoxifier of the brain. It increases melatonin. Um, by a massive amount and uh, causes a brain dump of toxins. Um, it's good for, you know, harmonizing the, 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 the nervous system and the endocannabinoid system, and it's good. But if you get marijuana, and vaporizing it is good, but when you're getting mar marijuana grown from who knows where with what knows what in it, and then you're smoking it instead of vaporizing it, you're doing, it's the same, sh it's a little better than drinking alcohol, a little better. And plus, like, you have to realize that these, these are all very powerful medicines. So you should just, just, in my opinion, to just smoke 
marijuana just for the sake of smoking and be like, yeah, man, I'm get you're, you're defeating the purpose of what it's there for. And it's, um, it's supposed to help you and teach you and you're supposed to do it with some type of like ceremony. Not, you know, not like a ceremony every time you smoke weed, but like, you know, just do it with respect and with, uh, and then I think it, it could be a healthy addition to the protocol, you know? Not in the beginning though. I think it takes time. Uh, I would say my, what I do, but we're on camera. <laughs> cool. Uh, was there any specific event that got you into trouble? Because you started your, your story from being the world champion, uh -huh. then going really, really deep. But was there any specific event that got you into trouble? Trouble? Well, you, you were in a difficult Trouble or position. travel? A, into a difficult position. Oh. Um, well, it was definitely uh, a combination of right, my body increasing in toxicity and things not working out as well as I wanted them to in life. Like, I know I said I was a Jiu-Jitsu world champion and I had an apartment in the Lower East Side. As my health started to decline, that stuff started to decline slowly and slowly and slowly. That I, didn't, I couldn't really process it and know what was going on. And so it seemed like it was just this overnight thing. But there was not really, it, it, was, it was mainly uh, the biggest thing I had was that I always had a void. Like, no matter what I accomplished, the next day I would wake up and say, okay, well, what's next? I, won the, I literally won the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu World Championships in 2010. And two days later, I was like, fuck, man. Like, what do I do? I, I suck. What can I do? Like, what can... And that was my mentality. It was a very toxic paradigm. But that, with so much pressure and energy compounded over the years, that type of unsustainable lifestyle... Uh, led to the breakdown. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank yeah, you a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to pick. I feel like you should just like throw the microphone or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll let him choose. Uh, thanks. Yeah. A uh, quick question, please. Yeah. Um, you talked about the pineal gland um, yeah. and the calcification of it. Yeah. Is there any way to revert that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the conventional, if you go on like websites like Mind Body Green and like wellness mama and stuff like these are all like big websites they talk about drinking apple cider vinegar and like taking certain types of oils uh in my experience all of that is bullshit your best way to decalcify your pineal gland is with a detox um and um plant medicines are good too but meditation yoga it's all reversible everything is reversible in my opinion and i haven't gotten to a point of utter bliss for me to say that to be true with 100 percent authority but from where I was to where I am now, I can tell you almost everything is reversible. And um, yeah, plant medicines, uh, I just want to say, plant medicines are not to be fucked with. You do not do plant medicines for the sake of doing them. You, you have to do these with intent. They will just totally hijack your world if, if you don't really treat them with the respect they deserve. And especially when someone is toxic with metals, the places I went to with ayahuasca, uh, with a toxic mind and mercury filled in my brain are just such places that no human should go. You know, it's not, we're not meant to learn from there, you know. So I know I went on a rant there, but hope that answered it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another quick question is yeah. you mentioned uh, Chinese medicine and um, yeah. the combination of food. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, they serve almost everything with rice and you always have meat and rice and stuff. Um, how does that work? Chinese medicine has nothing to do with Chinese food restaurants. <laughs> 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 so we're talking about like ancient practitioners who, who studied and, and, and cured uh, many, many, many decades ago, centuries ago, and they cultivated this practice. So trophology is basically uh, the, the, the main things of trophology, if you want to follow them, and they... I'll tell you, f with my body, they all ring true. Every time I disregard one of the, the rules, I can feel gas or indigestion. Or, um, which, by the way, like, on a side note, like, I feel like everyone farts all the time. We're literally not supposed to fart. Like, that's like, oh, I did something wrong. I'm farting. There's gas. I'm not digesting properly. So anyway, trophology. Starch and a protein in the same meal. You don't want to eat fruit after a meal. When you eat fruit after a meal, which is like a common thing, like dessert, right? You literally have all of this matter, this protein and whatever else you put in it, and then you have a quickly, di a quickly digested fruit on top of all of it. So when you have that, the fruit ferments, and by the time you're actually digesting it, it's just fermented. So avoid all fruit after a meal. Eat it by itself if you're going to eat it at all. The other rules are drinking all dairy alone, away from everything. Like mil having milk with a meal is just like you're crazy. 
uh, have milk alone, and if you're going to drink milk. Um, what are the other big rules? Uh, you know, those are really the only, I mean, there's like 10 or 12, but uh, there, if you just Google uh, the trophology pyramid, it'll tell, if you, it'll tell you exactly what you can mix with. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you much. can't spell trophology, just <laughs> food combining into Google will do yeah. this quite well. Maybe, I hope. T-R-O-P-H-O-L-O-G-Y. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah, um, and then you. Yeah. So you mentioned the spirit realm a lot, but I'm not really sure what you mean with that. Is it like the life after that or something? Yeah, so yeah, I want more information about the spirit realm you were Sure, mentioning. sure. So it's a very, very, very complex uh, answer to that question. Um, Those answers are coming anyways. What's that? There's a whole, there's other talks going into just oh, that, so okay. you don't have to go too deep. Okay. Um, basically, it's just, uh, you know, there are spirits, whatever, that exist, energ <laughs> energies that exist aside from us. Um, some of them are helpful, some of them are not. Then there's also, the energetic world is really just connecting to uh, the, the manifestation aspect of life. So actually, we're all manifesting in every instant. Every single one of my actions is a manifestation and is creating a new, a different life for me. Every single word, every single... So the spirit realm uh, is not just all about spirits and whatnot. It's about connecting to the ever-connectedness, the connectedness of all beings and all life, being one with nature. Um, it's not like some voodoo land that you go to and then... Uh, come back from. It can be for certain people, but a lot of it is just connecting to a different, more energetic part of yourself as opposed to the physical part of yourself, the mental chatter and the, the body. We're like, a, we're like a meat vessel. We're just a vessel of consciousness with our soul and our spirit and consciousness fused into this physical body, right? So when you get too caught in the physical, it's, hard, it's really easy to be depressed, but when you, when you leave the physical and say, oh, this is who I am, and then come back, and you kind of have a new appreciation, a new understanding of, of this life uh, in, in this physical world. Does that make sense? Uh, it's a kind little of. complicated, but... Yeah, yeah hopefully our next talks will yeah. we'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, three questions, mm -hmm. small questions. First one. Uh, you got, uh, you got, you got to do one, dude. All one. Right, Pick all one. Right, all right. Uh, fruits are in generally bad, or just after, like apple or something? Fruits? Yeah. Because fruit? you said. Uh, yeah. Fr if you're really ill, stay away from all fruits. If you're healthy, you're probably, you know, when you when you when you eat fruit and you have candida and parasites, you're feeding the parasites and candida. Because of the sugar. If you're relatively healthy and you really feel like it makes you feel good, like if you know it makes you feel good, stick to fruit, because every body is different. But if you, just if you just like think it makes you feel good or you feel like shit when you don't eat it, chances are you're, you're actually just losing, a di a candida's dying off, and that's why you can't tolerate no sugar. Okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And the water, bottled water is all right. So. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. We can do two more quick ones, and that's it. Thank you. Um, uh, about the parasites, how do you know that they are in the shed, and um, what was the process of getting uh, the parasite? Like how? <laughs> like seeing them? Yeah. Well, a lot of times you release them in stool, and they're on the outside, and you can see them. When you do suppositories, you do suppositories on an empty bowel. So when you do that, like this is crazy shit, actually. When you do suppositories on an empty bowel, uh, like garlic and onion essential oils, what happens to me is uh, I get. I, I put them up, I get this like crazy feeling in my stomach, like things are dying and gurgling. About an hour later, nothing but parasites come out. No fecal matter. It's literally like my body tells me like, uh, and it's, it happened, it's like a once a month thing now where I'll still release a parasite, but it was every day before. But uh, anyway, it, uh, it'll do this gurgling like I have a massive dump coming. Like, this, What's, what the fuck is this? And then I go to the bathroom and it's just like two worms. You know what I mean? So, it's, uh, it, so sometimes they're in your stool. Sometimes they, if you do it uh, really the right way, they come out uh, without Thank stool. Thank you. Yeah. Two, all right, two more questions. So. Suppositories. But check my website out. You'll see everything. Um, this guy in the front right here. Yeah. 
and then pick one more, and that's it. All right. Thank you. First of all, fantastic. Talk. Thank you. Thank um, you. On the subject of the water filters, yeah. I use one at home, but you were yeah. talking about the, the big Berkeley. Yeah. Did you say that's better than regular ones? Do what do you have, like a zero like water filter or something? No, it's uh, it, it just uses uh, it's like this three hundred dollar water filter or whatever. We use just a uh, simple. It's like under a hundred dollars. Mm, it it's not going to suffice less? unless it's there's like there's no water filters that I know that are a hundred dollars that suffice. Um, no, uh, okay. better than tap water, but it's probably like um, if it's reverse osmosis. It's find out if it is reverse osmosis, then I would say you're you're doing that's fine. But if it's not, um, I would say to get a big Berkey. Okay, thank yeah. you. One last question. Who's the lucky one? You, you want to choose? Just one. This guy right here. He seems excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, uh, this is about this um, fillings in the teeth. You talked about that. Mm -hmm. The amalgam filling. Yeah. So if, uh, if uh, suppose one gets to remove them, mm -hmm. what's the alternative? And where can you find the holistic dentist, as you just mentioned there? Uh, what's the alternative to not getting them out? No, no, no. Since because this is a filling, this will oh. get out, you know. So they use like porcelain and composite. They use other materials that aren't composed of metals. That's the okay. alternative to get. Yeah. They don't even use mercury m very often anymore. It's. Uh, I had an 80-year-old dentist who was from the you know from a long time ago, and he he still continued that practice. So, uh, so anyway, uh, so and how do you how do you find a biological dentist? Is that what you asked? Holistic dentist. I just saw that in the slide. Go just Google it in your in your area. Yeah. Biological holistic dentist, and okay. uh, and they'll they'll t they're gonna make sure they use a rubber dam over your mouth, okay. and uh, make sure they have like an ionizer in the in the room, and that they're sucking out air consistently. Because yeah, yeah. when they drill into it, it's a flare up of mercury vapor. Okay. This is why dentists have a massive amount of suicide rate. By the way, it's not because conventional thought that they're hurting people, and that no, they're 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 killing themselves because they're subjected to mer massive amounts of mercury vapor by re removing these. The incorrect way. Yeah. Thank All you. right.